we've got everything squared away. So, yeah, I, I, okay, one second. Problems fixed, people have been notified. Uh, let's look at the bands of Secret. They ban out the Lycan and the Wisp. They'll also take out the Ogre Magi, seeing a little bit of nerves. It's pretty funny watching Ogre not be able to cast his stun. He's just chasing, like, you do legs this time. And the guy controlling the stun can't get it off. Slark as well has been a very popular pick throughout Star Ladder Europe, at least the last couple days. Uh, so not going to let them get their hands on that. Uh, let's take a look at Power Rangers. They don't have too many matches. They've only got four matches in 6.83, of which they've won one of them. But they have been using quite a bit of this Wisp play, uh, pairing it, it looks like, with Sven. I know Ditya Ra's been playing the Sven a lot, and they've also paired it with the Phantom Assassin. But not going to see any of that today. We'll hear a Witch Doctor picked up by Team Secret. So you've got your heal, a little bit of push, along with the Nature's Prophets. Treants keeping them up. Uh, so it's pretty nice. Also, the Dream Coil, Paralyzing Cask, and the Death Ward all have really nice synergy along with another. Same sort of goes for the Astral Spirit and the Echo Stomp to start things off. Uh, so really good team fight control, I think, coming from Team Secret. And if they need it later on in the game, they'll have some good split push for the Nature's Prophet. Uh, the same thing goes for the Power Rangers, though. Really good split push coming off uh, of the back of the Anti-Mage. And Anti-Mage is generally a hero that's going to rip Nature's Prophet apart if they're on even a level footing and they start split pushing. If they run into each other in lane, Anti-Mage probably winning that as long as he has, I guess, at least a Basher so Nature's Prophet can't get out. And actually, not even then. I mean, Mana Void will keep Nature's Prophet in check, keep him from TPing out. Uh, Bat Rider, though, will be pretty good Five against Nature's Prophet me. and or Puck in the meantime. And there aren't really too many heroes that are going to shut down this Bat Rider's potential. So maybe we see this last pick. Uh, it looks like it's going to have to be that one roll uh, for Team Secret. It won't be a Void, Radiant and Power Team Rangers won't be picking a Viper. Those are the last bands from both teams. So far for Witch Doctor play, this is going to be the first time that Team Secret has picked up Witch Doctor in the new patch. Look back a little bit longer. I mean, obviously the Void Witch Doctor combo is pretty much undeniable, but yeah, I mean, they haven't really even picked a Witch Doctor in the last two, maybe even three weeks, probably because it's been... Most of their games have come from this Captain's Draft mode, so it's kind of hard to get a read just looking back at Secret's recent history. But uh, they haven't really been picking the hero that often. Who do they want to pair with it? Maybe someone else with the AoE stun, some control. Maybe we, we see this Fen. I guess Terrorblade is still available. Although Anti-Mage does do pretty well against his, uh... Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, Anti-Mage does pretty well against his brother from Warcraft 3. Uh, I think they dropped that, but... That Terrorblade pick is zooming out. That I really like. Zeus is going to do a lot of damage against that Terrorblade. The hero has incredibly high base armor, but... I'm going to rip him apart. And, uh, anytime you see an Elder Titan pick, I feel like it's... Pretty pretty good chance that that team was going to go for a hero like Slark, Terrorblade, or really any agility carry that just builds those stat items. Because Terrorblade, I guess Morphling is probably the other last great example. A Terrorblade, I mean, we see this hero with up to like 34, 35 base armor, and Elder Titan reduces that to zero. But now they're on the same team and they're working together. So people with a little bit less armor, as Terrorblade is going to try to rip them apart with that metamorphosis. And uh, Shacklow playing the Zeus Ditya carrying that new member of Power Rangers. I, and I really like Power Rangers. One of the most stable rosters, I think, in Dota. They've never been on the time, but everyone's sticking with it. And I don't know, I'm just really impressed by that. I love watching them play. And they've basically unchanged it. Yura's obviously new, but uh, J4, Cheshire, Cat, and Shaklo have been around for a while. So Soneko as well. Soneko's actually playing the Rubik over J4? What? 
How dare he? He better do really well. Uh, it's going to be J4 on that Skywrath Mage here as we'll start introducing PR. They're going to be on the Dire. It'll, of course, be Soneko on the Rubik. Batrider offlane is going to be Cheshire Cat. Not a surprise there. One of his most played and, well, maybe his favorite heroes. Who knows? Shacklow going to be Zeus in the mid lane. And Diddy Raw going to be carrying up top on that Ancy Mage. And it looks like... Maybe the bot rune is going to be the one that's hotly contested. We've got some Treants moving out for some Vision Karaoke as well. And we'll take a look at Team Secret. They're going to be on the Radiant Puppy. Supporting up on the Witch Doctor along with Big Daddy No-Tail. Supporting on that Elder Titan Karaoke. Carrying on the Terror Blade. S4 going to be that puck in the mid lane, looking to throw down maybe not a million dollar dream coil, but at least uh, we want to qualify for this land dream coil. See if he can bring that out. And misery. He struggled yesterday. He was completely countered by the opposition. Today, well, it's not going to be easy either playing this Nature's Prophet going up against uh, this Bat Rider, at least for the meantime, depending on how he gets to start. Oh, Big Daddy No Tail's in trouble. This is definitely going to be that first blood. You got that Napalm first. He is very fast, though, as he goes for the boots. 321 boost speed compared to the 340 of Cheshire Cat. And look at that long range orb. It's going to be the first blood for Sonako. Oh, just kidding. J4. I'm, my brain is conditioned that this guy's playing Rubik. But J4 coming in with that first blood. And let's see what that rune was. Was it worth it? Anti-Mage gets the Bounty Rune, Batrider gets the Bounty Rune, so PR off to a pretty nice start, controlling both of those Bounty Runes, so that's what, 200 gold, 200 experience to start things off this game. I'm just curious how this looks on the graphs. Mm, I thought it would just kind of be an instant, but I guess not. Pick it up at around like the 20 second mark. So, S4, not opting to, to start with the magic stick, but I'm sure he'll maybe bring himself one out. Or just rely on the bottle, the runes, and, and the, he should be able to control the runes over the Zeus. I mean, it's not going to be that difficult. 295 move speed there to 295 on the Zeus, but you can, of course, use that orb to get up there. Now up top, uh, we're going to have that tri-lane as they look for another kill. Misery gets up to level 2. We see him starting with uh, double circlets. We also saw s 4 Puck starting with the circlet as the stomp going to go out. It will actually be a little bit off the mark as this is Batrider, Cheshire Cat, contesting these pulls. Big Napalm stacks, da Big Daddy No-Tail. Nice. They both get denies there. Uh, I think this last one... I think Puppy was going for the deny, but he, he was attacking Cheshire Cat in the end. Is already our new tree. Cheshire Cat has burnt it down. We'll have to look up top. Misery's in a lot of trouble, and he will be falling here. And did you raw? I mean, Antimage is a hero that can get his hands dirty pretty early. That mana break really, really hurts. And if there's really no one to bring down Antimage, I don't think the Treants and some right clicks are going to be quite enough here. So 8 CS involved in a kill. Now Shocklo going to go ahead and get that bounty rune up top. That'll be the end of his for Big Daddy No-Tail as he wants to come towards the middle lane. He can't do much. He's only got an Echo Stomp. Holy crap, this courier. You know, just getting a little bit of a... Getting his read on at the candlelight. See what Big Daddy No-Tail can do. Start off with that Echo Stomp. Shocklo might not have enough time to retreat. This means Terrorblade is free farming in the bottom lane. Anti-Mage is uh, effectively free farming up in the top lane as well. And here we go. Onto Shocklow. Lots of damage. Everything going to land. No waning rift skilled up yet, but are the right clicks going to be enough? It looks like they will be the phase shift. Big Daddy No-Tail with the three armor going to take the tower hits. And also Misery going down in the top lane. So kills all over the place, but PR out to that 3-1 lead relatively early here. Just under three minutes. We've already had four kills. And the story is essentially Anti-Mage doing exceptionally well with the most farm. Terrorblade is like, I'm, I'm feeling good as well. Karoki, we've seen him do some crazy things. And all he really needs to get started off on this hero is maybe some boots, power treads, uh, that Aquila and the Yasha, so it's not that expensive. And we hear Poppy, yeah, they're jungling up a little bit. I mean, Witch Doctor with some levels is a hero that sort of can just disappear into the jungle. It's very easy to clear out any size camp with a paralyzing cask once it's level 2. Level 3, of course, even easier as it stuns neutrals for a very long time. What, 5 seconds? No, oh, actually, any creep. Oh, look at this. Soneko needs one more. It's, okay, it needs a lot more attacks. <laughs> it has been upgraded. We're at 3 minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, it's a good play here from Rubik, trying to get aggressive. 
Nature's Prophet does go, is already level 4, so he's died a couple times, but he's got the experience. There's a lift up and a throw back as they try to chase Soneko. S4, maybe you're gonna have to think twice about that as a lightning bolt and a fade bolt. All of the bolts taking a little bit of damage, so Misery's like, whatever, I've got my levels, I got two points in Triumph, let's go bottom, Metamorphosis is gonna be popped, and a secret. Trying to go get these early towers, catch up in gold that way as they are really not behind at all. They're actually ahead in experience. So Misery's early deaths. They haven't mattered too much. Anti-Mage didn't get either of the kills. He did get two assists and we see this bottom tower falling. There's already four people here. I can almost count Terrorblade as two people, but... Daniel Ra trying to do what he can up top, pushing down. He's got uh, three range creeps and a siege wagon. So he's doing pretty well uh, with pushing that tower, but he's not pushing as fast as a Terrorblade. I mean, Shocklow's gonna have to come to this bottom lane. He's got the Arc Lightning to try to dissuade this push, but I don't think it's gonna be enough. We've got one illusion with 20 seconds left with Metamorphosis, and that will bring that tier two tower down to about half HP. And already Power Rangers may be losing some of their built-in uh, Roche Pit control. We'll look to the middle lane, and that's where S4 is. He'll find the kill on the support Sky Rat. The Zeus rotated bottom, so they were like, Sky, you know, go mid, try to get some experience. And unfortunately, he'll go down, giving up a kill to S4, who's got the bottle. Completed the magic wand immediately after, so not really surprising stuff there. And now the pressure comes out top onto the anti mage. Did you raw? With 30 last hits, the most in the game. Net worth, I think, might be, yeah, Terrorblade and Puck, just because, one, they got that tower down. They've both found, or the Puck, I guess, has found two kills solo. Actually, that's a lie, because Big Daddy No-Tail rotated over. I feel like he just killed the Skywrath by himself, but I wasn't sure if someone was around with him. Cheshire Cats moved back into the jungle. He is level 5. He's got 1,600 gold already on these Boots of Speed. So this Blink Dagger comes up in the next couple minutes, and that's going to be uh, really good uh, for the Bat Rider. Can maybe try to shut down uh, that push. Jump on the Terror Blade. Could be tough. Which Terror Blade is truly the real one? At least jump on somebody and try to start the fight off 4v5. See what Zeus wants to go for. He's got the bottle already. He's got the brown boots. Sometimes we'll see the Zeus. They'll stay on the brown boots. They'll get that soul ring up because, of course, that soul ring now builds into bloodstone. So that kind of alleviates the problem uh, or the need to go for your mana boots. Mana boots are nice because it gives you some mobility. But if you have a soul ring and it can get into a faster, maybe blink force or yule scepter, one of those mobility items can be beneficial. But we have seen, uh, who was it? I think it was God from Virtus Pro just going Brown Boots, Bloodstone, Dagon. Uh, just blowing people up. It's been somewhat of a popular build for Zeus uh, as of late. Misery, though, in trouble again in the top lane. He has not got up to level 6. No Wrath of Nature. But here's this rotation. There's a nice coil from S4. We talked about wanting to see some of those. He'll try to bring down the Rubik, who will TP out. He'll find the Sky Wrath at the very least. And did you raw taking some damage, but, but he'll be okay. So Puck onto a killing spree already. 3-0-0. Zero, 1,400 gold. So we know that he's going to be wanting to get up that Blink Dagger as well. It's here for Cheshire Cat. The pings come out, so they are very, very aware that he's already got it. So there's going to be no powerful unveiling of this, uh, this Blink Dagger. Just creating some space, I guess. Soul Ring also coming out for the Elder Titan, along with uh, some Tranquil Boots. Elder Titan now given some farming priority down here in the bottom lane. Oh, just kidding. Terrorblade's here as well. They're still pushing towers, guys. And who is it rotating over here? It's going to be the Rubik. Uh-oh, Big Daddy No-Tail spots it out. They're going to get him around in the trees, and the Metamorphous damage here is immense. Kuroki going to find another kill. And now the Tier 2, actually his first kill, but finding another tower. And they've taken two towers out of the bottom lane. They might transition to another tier one. I mean, you kind of take those towers, your creep wave starts pushing. It's no longer that safe of a place for uh, your one roll to farm. Kuroki, though, already at the point with this Aquila, and he's, what, like 500 gold away from a Yasha, so he can easily just start jungling at this point, or they can swing up top with four, uh, even five, and just try to bring down these tier ones. 
Just get the out of towers, and if you're not confident going high ground, then just keep farming up. I mean, you've got the tear blade. And here's a nice smoke, though, from PR. They're going to find one. Ah, uh -huh, it seems kind of risky to throw the lasso out on that one. He's going to find himself an illusion. But PR, at least trying to do something here. Nice, nice earth splitters. Making Zeus have to move over to the side. That's uh, a little unfortunate. He tries to retreat out there. Choke point is blocked. He'll go down. I'm not even sure where the sky rep died. It looks like he was right here. As I, I just noticed that as well. I someone I was looking on the subreddit last night. They added the little oil slash blood spots back, which is really nice. I, I didn't even honestly notice they took it away, but then like yesterday, I started noticing it was back in the game. I was like, this is this is new or different. And then there you go. It's it's back in. It's uh, I think it's nice. Puppy now, trying to farm out the bottom lane. He's up to level 5, which is pretty good, considering they've had four heroes pushing the bottom lane for some time. I think Puppy maybe Dyer's fell back and jungled for a while. Uh, but he's looking for maybe some mana boots. I think he actually just bought something. Could have just perhaps been the wards. Where's that courier? It was flying out. The Yasha's coming out for Kuroki, and S4's got his blink dagger. So those are some pretty big item pickups. Let's quickly check uh, map control right now. So we're, we're looking at these Radiant Wards. That one's extremely aggressive. That's how they killed that Rubik so easy. They saw him rotating over with this ward. I can only assume Big Daddy No-Tail put it down. They had a lane ward. This one is new because they are expecting some rotations coming through this way and into the jungle over here, wanting to shut down the Terror Blade. So those wards assisting the Terror Blade. And oh my god, this was actually here. They smoked right on top of this ward. Uh, just a few minutes ago. So that was uh, pretty bad news. So I think I really like the ward locations for Team Secret. They've also dewarded their Ancients, uh, or at least attempted to, whether the ward was there or not. And we'll look. It's just this ward in the mid lane and up here, kind of scouting out that tier 1 tower. So a lane ward for Ditya Ra. Yeah, but they've... Okay, they did get this one tower, Anti-Mage, and that, and that ward probably helped them out to find that. But so far, Team Secrets looking pretty good. Misery, again, having a rough time. He's 1-3-1, one, and one, but he's got level 8. He's helped push down some towers. He's going straight for treads, trying to just get all the, the cheapest intelligence that he can. Going for the robe of the Magi and the circlets. We'll see if he turns those into null tallies. Maybe one of the robes into a blade mail, the other into perhaps an orchid or maybe even a drum. I don't know. Maybe he's really just being cheap and... Secret wants to end this game in the next 10 minutes, and it won't matter what Nature's Prophet has. But if this game moves later, those early investments could maybe slow down the Nature's Prophet to some real items like Sheep Sticks, Necro 3s. Just gonna alt. Feeling, feeling pressured, like, wh where are these guys? They alt, they're smoked up. They've got the information that basically everyone is together and they still think they can go in and try to win this fight. It's going to be 4v5. Maybe they're just smoking to get some uh, extra vision out on the map, I would expect. So Neko wants to ward this, but now that he finds all the treants, he doesn't even bother putting down the ward and it'll just TP out. So I think that's a pretty good call. Unfortunately, they used a smoke to get in there. And look at this, the speed of Kuroki moving in with that haste rune. And now everyone shows up in the mid lane. They know there's no Zeus ultimate. How are you going to stop this push without your biggest team fight uh, ability? Still, uh, that's an invis rune on. Oh, the nice silence. That's a beautiful play by J4 and Shock Love letting uh, S4 move up the hill there. But is it even going to work out? It doesn't look like it will. Six armor keeps the puck up a little while. Now Kuroki moving in with the Metamorphosis. Shock Love can't go anywhere. The Death Ward range will bring him down. And uh, while it was a nice play from PR, I think that just kind of shows you that they're rather behind. The Zeus is level 8, so that's one level behind the puck. Sky was only 5. Of course, if he's 6, he drops the Mystic Flare, and that's an easy kill. And they probably get out cleanly, but S4 being able to survive through that silence, dropping the Coil on 2, even doing some damage with Waning Rift and his orb, and then obviously the support, the cal Calvary, Cavalry, I can't say that word, comes in and uh, cleans things up. But, uh, sorry, I thought I switched the net worth chart. We'll move over to that now. We see Terrorblade, 7.2k, looking at his farm, 95. He did take over the Anti-Mage and farm. He's pushed down two, make it three towers now. So he's feeling pretty good. And even the support, Big Daddy, I think, found some farm in the bottom lane. He's 3.1. Obviously, there's some tower gold moving into that. 
And uh, Rubik, I think, is doing rather well, being not too far behind and having only taken one tower, or his team's only taken one tower. He's at 2.9. Puppy playing that five roll as per usual. Did finish up that urn, so that's more heal along with his push. Opted for a slightly early point in Maledict. The 4 4 0 build, very, very common. Puppy going for the one early investment in Maledict. I would guess he goes for Voodoo Restoration next, but maybe wanting Maledict for the Anti Mage. Like, if they can get even one point of it on him, do a bunch of damage, Anti Mage blinks, he's probably still going down. I, th I, I would guess that's why he goes for the Maledict here. Although, personally, the first point is not great. Although I'm not sure they need too much Voodoo Restoration to really uh, push these towers. Another ultimate goes off. It's going to reveal some portions of the map uh, as they were smoked. So they won't see who it was, but they know that someone is smoked up and moving in. And we'll see even the lines being drawn. That's by Rubik. He's like, let's go this way. Let's try to cut off um, whoever that is. It was at least maybe one or two people moving up. Puppy will be smoking to drop some wards, so the same thing that this Rubik was trying to do just a couple seconds ago. <laughs> Puppy's like, ooh, low creeps. They'll take him out, and I'll TP from uh, the line of sight. I'm going to be blocked there, so Neko can't cancel it with the lift. He had a good sense. Let's see if he goes to D-ward, those. I think he might realize. Shocklow going to be able to TP out of the bottom lane in the nick of time. Who's holding on the top? It's Big Daddy No Tell right now to stopping the push. He's up to level 8. Let's check support levels. So, level 8 here on uh, Big Daddy No Tail and level 7 on Poppy. So, a slight advantage over those supports that are 8 and level 6. At least J4 now is going to have two points in the Ancient Seal, one in the Mystic Flare. Probably going to continue to max Ancient Seal. They want to keep this Puck silenced as long as possible. So he's already level 11, so there's a 5 level advantage over J4. It's a pretty tough life for him. He can just get blown up. Misery at level 9, so the offlaners went pretty even in terms of their experience. Let's look at their items. Four staff and a blink. Cheshire Cat's picked up quite a bit, and we see the Orchid completed. That I, I figured the robes might go into it. Uh, just holding on to the circle. It's not worried about uh, finishing up the Null Tallies, just trying to get to the Orchid a little bit quicker. And also, I mean, that's a 6.3 thing, right? Null Tally, or the circlet's now cheaper. It's only 165 instead of 185, and that extra cost went into the recipes, so maybe that's the new thing we see for these Nature's Prophets. Just go for the circlet, go straight into the Orchid, picking up the Orchid mainly for the Anti-Mage here, and like I talked about earlier, I think that's the reason the Maledict was picked up as well. Just try to kill him after the fact with Maledict and Soulburn. And did you raw? He's not taken a death yet. He's got 130 CS, 8.3k. He is starting to fall behind. Almost 2,000 gold behind Kuroki. And Kuroki with even more last. It's 144, so he's got about 11 creep hitting advantage. The map control is very much in Secret's favor for right now. We saw these aggressive wards. Puppy smoked up to place them. And uh, just the standard rune wards here for PR. We'll see if Secret, how far ahead are they actually? 4,000, maybe 200, 4,500 gold, 2,000 experience. So it's not massive leads, but it's 17 minutes. They've got to be feeling pretty good about it. And I think uh, they might be looking for this top tower. They're going to jump in S4 onto it too. He's got to be careful. Did you raw doing a lot of damage right back to him? This Earth Splitter. Oh, he gets stunned on top of it. He breaks the coil, and then the Earth Splitter is going to clasp on top of him. Cheshire Cat actually staying alive. Puppy will go down to his own death mortar. We're stolen over by Soneko, but look at this. The trees. Nice body blocks by Misery. Cheshire Cat is able to live. He's very mobile with the blink and the force. But now with these trees up here, let's check out the team fight recap. About 1,800. I don't even want to do math this morning. 2,400 XP for Secret, 800 for PR, and about a net change of a little under 1,000 gold. An advantage of secret, so pushing that lead out to maybe 5,500. Kuroki is still not worried about doing anything. He's already got the Manta completed up. He's got the Ring of Aquila. I told myself to put on the default announcer, but I forgot. Uh, and 3.5k gold in the bank. That's ridiculous. All right, the stop is people try to TP in. Can and Misery get out of here? No, Son Echo gonna lift him up. Misery will go down once more. Got Illusions pushing out the bottom lane. That'll eventually have to be dealt with. And we see, I think that's the Skywrath Mage 
drawing lines over there. They've got another smoke, so maybe they try to find a pick off. We saw them already, like very, very early on, try to pick off the Terrible. And unfortunately, they smoked on a ward right in this location, and then they got down here and they lassoed an, an illusion of Terrorblade. So things did not go well. It's probably fresh in their mind. But with that smoke, I think they're going to want to do something with it. Kuroki moving right over to Roche. And already, just by himself, he's got it to about three quarter HP. We'll see. Really, he's going into stats. I mean, I don't want to question Puppy. That's interesting, for sure. We'll leave it at that. It's very interesting that he's putting points into stats over either the Voodoo Restoration or the Maledict. I mean, Voodoo is pretty mana efficient, I guess, at, at level 1. Maledict, I feel like, isn't great, but if your team is doing so much damage, I guess it's fine. Uh, wants to be a little bit more survival with the stats. Who knows? S4 pushing out the middle lane. Almost got his uh, Yule Scepter. Got the Staff of Wizardry and 1100 in his pockets. Did Yura trying to farm? The pings are coming out. They know exactly where he is right now. Misery moving in. Wants to find that Orchid. Can't get it in time, though. Did Yura realizes he's in some trouble. He'll move away. He's got the Battle Fury, the Trent, and the Yasha. So also doing very well here at 20 minutes. Oh, they're going to find him up there. Can they get the Orchid off? They will. The Waning Rift. Everything. Did you wrong? Going to be brought down. That's going to be his second death now. And I think that kill is really opening up uh, Secret to push the top lane. Perhaps PR. They're grouped up towards bottom. They could maybe find the kill on this Terror Blade. But if they do, I still feel like they're going to lose that tier 2 tower in top. So PR being forced to make some decisions that, well, making trades that still aren't fantastic for them. Losing almost all of their map control. They have not backed off the top lane. S4 is going right back up there. He even got a double damage rune, which means the bounty was scooped up bottom by PR. The Aegis is on Kuroki, so even if they kill him with these towers, the both tier one, tier ones and tier twos in both middle and bot, the support from Seeker can easily come uh, and try to help with that second life. And now the push onto the tower comes. Tons of Treants dealing with it. Zeus is going to get involved, and Seeker going to be pretty careful about it. Sure, they could force this fight, but... Maybe not even going to bother. Terrorblade Delusions back to the middle lane. Chillin'. Maybe not wanting to show. Not that it matters, because I feel like you see a Terrorblade in a lane and most of the time you just assume it's not real. Batrider going in for this. He's going to bring in the Puck. Pulling him back. Rubik's there as well. Can't S4 survive? No. He'll be brought down first, which means no coil. But Kuroki is here. He's got Metamorphosis if he wants it. He also has Sunder if he gets pretty low. And it's going to be No Tail, I think, that picks up the Batrider. Nicely done there. Another slice from Kuroki. Wants to maybe find a target to Sunder. Might just go for his, his ally here or try to chase down this Zeus. He'll move away. Doesn't want uh, the burst damage of Shacklo to be unleashed. Dyer's middle tower. Under so if they don't get too greedy, pretty nice secret playing very reserved, getting away with what they can, nothing more. But they do lose Misery, he went down here, Puck obviously was the target of that Batrider who did fall, so that's, that's a pretty good trade and I like that. Big Daddy No-Tail gets sundered and will TP back to base so Kuroki doesn't have to go anywhere. And he did have that Aegis, so again, probably not too worried about dying uh, in that engagement. Probably why he stuck with it as long as he did. Up now about 5,000 gold ahead of the Anti-Mage. Falling rapidly behind. Going for the ultimate orb right now. Trying to finish up that Manta. And we've already seen this Manta's been online for days. And two more ultimate orbs have gone along with that. Because the Eye of Scotty is already here for Kuroki. He's got 233 last hits compared to the 189 of the Anti-Mage. They're going in for the lasso right now. Kuroki has also not died and is on a killing spree. They pull him very, very far back though. That's going to be one life now. The sleep goes out. The silence on the Ditura. Are they going to be able to get Kuroki out of this one? He's... Going down pretty fast. They'll dodge that slow with that Manta. Look at this coil here from Puck. He gets three on the back lines, and I think they just want to retreat out. As Puck says, Puck out. So, yes, I think they're just trying to leave. Unfortunately, S4 not going to be able to do that. And he'll take his third death. He's 4, 3, and 5. Fourth in the net worth overall this game, 8.2. And Kuroki's like, oh, how nice. I'll go ahead and take that. As Puppy actually bought a bottle and handed it over to the Terrorblade to bottle up that regen and just keep farming. They're doing everything to keep Kuroki hitting creeps, and it's, it really shows. Like, look at this! 16.4k net worth. I don't know how that guy does it. 
saw him play a, a pretty solid game yesterday on Ember Spirit to start things off. Uh, but got really, really shut down as Secret made a lot of space early, but then failed to, to, to continue that. And it was uh, the Lions on the comeback, man. They looked fantastic yesterday. And probably going to qualify for Starlight or Land Final. So we'll get to see some new blood uh, in Kiev, and that's going to be awesome. It's going to be a really great experience for them. And it's that all Swedish lineup that I think everyone in esports just loves to see. So the Alliance has fallen a little bit on hard times. As uh, well, we see S4 playing for Secret, so. They want the kill on this Zeus. What did Zeus even get up to? Well, there's the Blink Dagger. He did go for that Soul Ring. He, he'll like to turn that into a Bloodstone if he ever even finds the chance. But uh, back to the Zeus. He's looking for the Yule Scepter as well. So the Blink, Yules. That actually could be a Force Staff, perhaps. Uh, Force Staff is... I mean, it's good, but it's it's like if you get coiled and you Force Staff your ally, you're actually doing them a disservice. Same thing with yourself. So maybe he goes for the Yules. And of course that Yule's there on S4, and now at 24 minutes, Secret is looking to break into that high ground, trying to bring down the tier 3 tower in mid. There's the Metamorphosis with basically full duration. There's already three illusions, one uh, from your Conjure image and obviously from the Manta. More Treants to be spawned, bringing down the melee barracks. They're going to force out the buyback on Shocklow, and they'll start to fall back. A nice stop will sleep two over in this area. Now the Earth Splitter going out this way. A little off the mark, maybe expecting some people to, to go out that way. I don't know. I feel like if he hit it here, he could have maybe landed it, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. Already the Batrider and the Skywrath have fallen, and now the range racks will go down. We've seen Secret play very, very reserved and safe Dota, but now as they take down this racks, they're feeling rather unstoppable. Nature's Prophet will be the soul burn that brings down that anti-mage. No buyback for a minute, and surely a 25. I think PR might just be tapping out. They're about to lose their bottom lane of racks. They've forced to stop this push from basically the four minute mark. Misery got to level four, went to the bot lane. They took a tier one. I think a couple minutes later, Kuroki and No Tail bring down the tier two. And then they farmed up some core items. We got the Manta online, pushed a few more towers, found the Scotty here for Kuroki. And Team Secret just successfully finding space. The scoreline 18 to 12, but the game not nearly that close. It's a f <laughs> leading almost the entire time, except for when PR got the early uh, double bounty runes at the zero minute mark. But a 14,000 gold lead right now, 6,000 experience, and now when you push into that racks or push into the high ground and find those racks, it's a lot more money than it used to be. As uh, those buildings will now give you, I think it's 125 to 150 gold per person for the melee and 75 per person on range. So it's a pretty solid increase. And I think that really just helps you put the nail in the coffin once you break that high ground. So another coil out onto two. That'll bring down the Zeus. No buyback, but the mana void goes out. This one's onto Puppy. Now Kuroki going to battle up. you has got no chance. Kuroki's still fighting. They try to bring him down with a coil. And there it is. Shaklo with a good game. Well played. GG. Coming out from Secret as well. And there you have it, Secret. They're going to move up to 11 and 3 here in Star Ladder, saying we are going to Kiev, of course. They won a shot. I mean, they got, what, second place last time in season 10. They, they'd like to have another shot at first. And, well, might have a pretty good time. There's some new up and